Hey folks, Justin Thayer, TeamThayer.com, coming to you from the beautiful southwest hills of Eugene. Have a beautiful backdrop for you today. Let's get into it. An important sales tactic, an important sales philosophy, important to the sales business of all genres. Of course, I am a real estate broker so my focus is how to apply to real estate. So what we're doing is first and foremost, what I call getting the buyer off the fence, okay? A buyer comes through your listing, usually through a buyer's agent, right? Sometimes through an open house, sometimes calling the listing broker themselves. At that point, all those buyers are what I would call on the fence. They came out out of the advertising or even if they just saw the sign and, and like the facade of the house or even most important and the most critical is catching the buyers there with their buyer's agents because they have the most research given to them. Right? They, that buyer at that point is on the fence. Okay. Now, there's two ways you can go. You can fall off and look at another product not being interested in the home you're selling or product you're selling or they can go this way and either collect more research or data so they can make a decision to, to make an offer or they make an offer of course our job as professional listing brokers which are salespeople of homes is to get that buyer to go that way okay so as soon as a buyer walks into your house from the outside, your chances of getting an offer go up 50-50, or 50%, they get a 50-50, okay? Haven't, haven't gone inside the home, you're still at zero. Once they go inside the home, your chances just went up 50%, they're on the fence, okay? What I do in this case, so let's start off with the most prevalent and the most likely of scenarios. A buyer's agent shows a potential buyer, their client, their fiduciary, one of my listings. I am going to get a notification on my cell phone. I'm going to call that agent up, not immediately, because I don't want to call them and disrupt their showing process. But I will call them about an hour later, you know, ask, hey, are you still with your client? Okay, just, you know, can you call me back when you're done? I had a question for you. Or, hey, yeah, oh, you showed my listing today. Great, that's awesome, you showed my listing, right? What'd they think? Or I'll say something like, selling past the sale. A little trick I call selling past the sale, which is just assuming, right? Because you just, <laughs> it gets a form of momentum going and then if you get heavier resistance, you know you have more work to do, right? I'll say, so you're bringing an offer then? And you know, from there, they will say, they will start explaining to me either that, yes, they're bringing an offer or they are interested or there's number two, one, two, three, or number four on their list. Or they will explain to me why they don't like it, how it didn't fit. Doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna go through the same process. They were interested enough to take the time to drive out, get their broker to drive out, go inside the house, make the appointment if there's somebody in there. If not, you know, do all the things, go inside the house and look, right? So no matter what, I feel there's a potential to get a sale. Even if the buyer's agent says, ah, oh, man, they hated it. So scenario one, they hated it. That's right, most objections that you get, right? Great, How, why'd they hate it? Oh man, that's too bad, why'd they hate it? Oh yeah, they, they, they want a house that's fenced. Perfect, put it in the offer. Hey, you never know. What's beautiful about that is maybe that was the only objection. The only thing, they love the house except they really want a house that fits. But nobody thought to say, well, what if we build you a fence? right 
And they can come two ways. Well, what if we build you a fence? Put it in the offer. What if we save you enough money that you, they can buy a fence? What if we allocate funds for a fence? All kinds of things you can do with that. Oftentimes, you'll find that you, you actually end up discounting less when you're doing more. Okay? You're going to discount less when you offer more or you're doing more. We're going to put that fence in for you. Right? It makes the buyers happy, less work they have to do, right? it, it, and it can save the seller money. It'll put money in the seller's pocket a lot of the time. There's an old saying. There's an old saying or old standard that says this. Sales are missed by a few words, never a few dollars. I'm going to repeat that because that is so important to grasp. Sales are missed by a few words, never a few dollars. Sales that are missed. Sometimes the house really isn't a match. It doesn't make sense for them. In order to have a sale, you have to have what's called a Pareto efficiency. Okay? It has to make sense to everybody involved. The buyer, the seller, even the brokers. Everything has to make sense. You know, the buyer's agent, whose job is the fiduciary responsibility to the buyers, their job is to protect the buyers. My job is to, uh, the hired gun, if you will, for the sellers. And they might come together, but one of us might even say, hey, here's why that doesn't make sense. Hold off. Because I'm just giving you this information to protect you as your fiduciary. Okay? We have a fiduciary responsibility as brokers right, to put our clients above our own interests. So, in that, as a listing broker, everybody who shows a house, looks at a house, gets the same line of sales directed, time tested, questioning. What can we do to get them to write an offer? What would we have to do to make you happy with this home? These are the kinds of questions. Is there anything I can do to change the home that would make them interested? Is there a price that they would buy it at? Here's the thing on price. Of course there's a price they'd buy it at. If the home if it was a $250,000 home and they could get it for $150,000, of course they'd, they'd do it. A lot of things would go by the wayside at that point, right? Of course, that's not what we're saying to do. What we're saying is there's always a way to make it work, but it has to be a Pareto efficiency, okay? It has to work for everybody. So. If somebody says, I hate this house, if it was $50,000, you'd like it a lot more, correct? Of course. However, that would probably be an efficiency uh, to the seller of the property, depending on the parameters and the details of their situation. So, the line of questioning, you know? Always, always, always also ask the buyer's agent or the buyer in the open house or that your third person is showing, what is it you don't like about it? What is it that doesn't work for you? Okay? What if we could turn the half bath into a full bath? What if we did that in the sell price? If would that work? And it might sound, uh, it, it's a lot of work, sure. But it might be the way the sellers get their home sold for a fair price for the money they need then the buyers get the exact home that they want. I've done it. I've put fences in, okay? I've done some remodels. I've put carpet in, in the terms of a sale. To, you know, uh, allocated funds to take out uh, trees, landscaping. Each one of those instances, I really feel, instead of just going to discount, well, what if the price is lower? What if the price is lower? Well, what if we work together and fix these things that just make it just out of reach for you. Not the perfect home for you, so you don't have to keep on searching and shopping, okay? We'll work with you. That adds value to your product and yourself, okay? When you're doing something 
instead of just discounting for something not done, it actually is valuable to the buyer because it's time and time is money. It's also money, actual money out of their pocket or a liquid out of their pocket, liquid money. Instead, they can keep their money in their pocket and it's absorbed in the already set sales price or already um, negotiated, if you will. But most of the time, a buyer will feel value when something is being done for them and you're saving them time. That's it. Remember, call, talk to every buyer, ask what would it take to make them happy about this home? Is there anything you could do? And I like to say, in a perfect world, the sky's the limit. Just let me know, because who knows? Anything's possible. This is America, right? Thank you so much for listening. Remember to comment on the lines below. I love that. Especially if you think my information is incorrect. That's even, that's the best. Um, red button up there. Subscribe if you haven't already to my YouTube channel. TeamThayer.com. Eugene, Oregon. See you next time.